Okay, this game starts off with the normal pawn exchange. Jockey in for that center squares. Got a little aggressive, bringing the queen out early. Attacking with the bishop, check. Recreated. Didn't sacrifice the bishop. Since he brought the knight out there, I went ahead and put a pin on that knight temporarily. Of course, the classic attack chased the queen from the opponent. The bishop and now the pawn. But of course, he left his... Uh, <laughs> He left his uh, his back pawn. His back pawn, his uh, B7 pawn open for capture. All right, and then of course the normal attack mode. But then of course he realized that that B7 pawn was the protector of the knight. So, when he rook attacks the queen. So the, the knight is protecting the rook that is attacking the queen, but who's protecting the uh, knight? Check. Knight's captured. Then, of course, out of uh, response and anger because uh, uh, rejecting me being in their territory like a T-cell. So, trying to attack anything that's foreign within the uh, body, like a virus. But as you can see, he left his, uh, his left flank queen side open. He makes a weak move by coming down there attacking the B2 pawn, capturing it. I move the knight out to go ahead to get into the action, to get into the fight, to start attacking that queen up there. Okay, but of course he wants to try to play my game of pinning so he pins my knight so I can't move the knight because the queen is there but I have a few tricks up my sleeve okay I'm gonna start with the check okay surprise he didn't come and protect the king by either moving the king out the way or coming up with the queen to protect the king okay but yeah he moves the king out of danger into safety so to speak <sighs> but his queen is left on the table okay surprised he didn't move the queen out the way but instead he decided to sacrifice his queen. Maybe that was a slip up, but uh, under pressure and his time was running down fast. So he went with that move, hoping, I guess, uh, that I would waste my time thinking about what he's trying to do or why did he do that, but I didn't. So I went ahead and just took the queen he immediately exchanges by uh, the bishop for, uh, takes the, takes the, um, the bishop with the knight. His king looks like it's in relative safety until I come down and uh, fork his uh, king and rook. And then eventually he runs out of time.
So this is kind of like a surprise move where I pushed up. His uh, night was out, developed to free up the king to castle and to safety on the king's side, but he neglected that with my queen being out and my bishop being free, that, um, that once I pushed that pawn up, or push the pawn up, he would uh, have a little bit of trouble. Uh, he would be trapped. So since he was trapped, uh, he, he gave up the bishop. Bishop time bishop. And now I'm just free to just be aggressive and just and just every attack that he does, you know, leads to a counterattack and aggressive play on my part. As you can see, I'm keeping that uh, that knight pinned in there. Uh, my queen is preventing him from castling because I'm attacking that rook and Anyway, is open since since the uh, G pawn, the G two pawn is gone. So on G two is gone. So all that side is open there and ready, accessible for attack and eventually checkmate. But uh, but anyway, as you can see, the beauty of the bishop pinning in that knight because if he moves the knight to attack my queen and then at the same time as you see the uh, the bishop and the queen are beautifully protecting the center or controlling the center squares that pawn as well the, the auxiliaries along with the bishop so you know it gives me a lot of uh a lot of leeway. So now he has to either move his rook or move his pawn up, but then his pawn is not protected. Even if he goes there to try to protect the knight or to block the queen from taking his rook. So then that would just open up or cause more, more damage. So, yeah, apparently the obvious, it looks like, you know, yeah, he can just push up. But as you can see, it's F2 or F or R or F pawn has no support, as we already mentioned. So that's an easy take. I could have came in aggressive, more aggressive with the queen, but I just wanted to play this out and see how it plays out. So we got the queen and bishop controlling the center squares. Also have access and broke up the uh, broke up f. Two and G2 to open up the left flank on the king side, attacking, pinning in the knight, and at the same time attacking the uh, rook on H1. Okay, so this was kind of a surprise where he decided to attack my queen or attack the queen while leaving his rook and queen exposed to the bishop.
but as you can see since I already know that the knight is weak whether it was pinned or whether it's attacking so I just counter attack by just moving up the queen to check and also continue to pin on the knight so the knight is immobile and easy for taking um, checking the king the king has to either he has moved the knight back or he has to uh, find a way to or he has to move the king so he's in a really dire position his rook is still free or still undefended his queen is still under his, his queen is defended by the king but once he moves the king his queen is also undefended okay so he decides to uh He decides to go all out and uh, <laughs> and defend. Even though the queen cannot defend herself, she decides to block and, as last resort, uh, desperation, uh, last samurai suicide move, um, stand in front of the king. Which I would think that he would have opted for moving the knight back. To be in front of the king pinned in again but that didn't happen then just lose the rook okay so I just go ahead and just take the queen with the bishop instead of with the uh, queen no need to exchange queens in this instance once I take the queen the bishop I still have a line of sight of attack on the rook or line or line to take the rook when he decides or if he decides to take the knight and go back and uh, defend the king and also exchange his queen for the bishop okay and of course I try to pin him in, keep him in there a little bit, a little bit longer, not give him too many options. Okay, the king has in check, it must move or, or defend. He has nothing to really defend it, so he moves the king. Okay, I continue my destruction of the king's side or left flank check and then he moves the king now the queen now the king is even more exposed out there out of safety and in the center and as you can see his uh, forces are pretty much undeveloped you have three major pieces just sitting on the uh, queen side, right flank, not able to engage or join the battle. While the black pieces have a queen that is very active and just pursuing the king. So I decide, or the black pieces decide to develop a knight or develop their pieces a little bit more. And decided to, before he could develop or bring out his queen side pieces to destroy the queen side. Taking the bishop, capturing the bishop. OK, 
okay classic is weak move but at the same time he attacks the queen most likely to uh, try to wind up wind down the black piece's time since he knows he's in a really bad condition okay and that was a slip up whereas but as you can see even if there's a slip up and the queen took the wrong pawn leaving it exposed to the knight there's still so too many so many pieces that can fight and attack and, and attack the king that is completely exposed check and I just start developing pieces Okay, I'm ahead of pieces, so whenever you're ahead, you trade down or exchange down or, or exchange because you're, all, you're ahead in pieces, so it makes sense and it gives your opponent less options. So now continue my original plan to destroy the queen side the opponent's queen side keep the uh, keep the king defended okay and as you can see there that didn't make any sense at all when you have that king pawn on e7 heavily defended by a king, a bishop, and a knight. So that might have been a slip up in response to being nervous, running out of time. And at this, and under pressure, so I decided to take it with the bishop instead of the knight. To give myself or give the king a little bit more wiggle room in case he comes to come down there with his rook. Check. Okay, so he has one major piece in the fight. That was kind of a slip up, but um, there's so many pieces that I can afford to uh, slip up and lose a few pieces. So now I'm just trying to wind down his time, but uh, as you can see, I'm probably a little bit more pressed for time than, than the opponent. So now it's just time to supply, uh, apply the superior pieces. Could have went ahead and took his rook but it was a slip up and I moved the pawn instead moved the h pawn instead so you know he decides to take to wind down my time and I decided to go for the queen to make it a little bit easier to, to gain back some time check and then just trap him up on the uh, on the first and second columns there. That queen check forces him to go back to the second column. 
between the second rank. That pass pawn is not going to make it, so not really concerned about that. Just concerned about the time, which is winding down, and he has more time than I than I do. So I have to speed this up. So he pushes the pawn down instead of using that pawn, you know, the high behind, which I would never understand, but you know. You would think that he would try to push his pass pawn and maybe maybe I slip up and he gets a queen, which really won't help him, but still, you know, at least he can at least he tried until the very end. Okay, so now he understands the predicament he's in because he cannot move. He's highly exposed. He cannot hide like he should have behind the pawn or use that pawn for a cover. So now he's forced to go back to the uh, first rank. rank. So he tries to distance himself. But as you can see, the uh, queen and the rook is doing the long range plan. and controlling the opponent's king like a puppet master. Checkmate. This is, I really had to talk about this game. Starts off normally, change the pawns, then opponent, is the normal chase the queen so normally I don't play the bishop to protect the king but you know I said okay oh well I just give myself an extra chance to castle and free up that get that knight out there into play into battle did the normal Okay, he comes there, um, attacking, attacking the uh, pawn on the king side, uh, trying to create a fork uh, where he can come in there and just steal my 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 rook. But I could either castle to avoid that, or I could just go ahead and take his uh, knight. I didn't take his knight because I slipped up. Castled instead. I mean, or I forgot to, you know, took the pawn, moved the king over, but he, <laughs> it was the first, the, the second time he trapped his uh, knight. And uh, so he puts the knight back, I could take it again, but then I slip up, make a mistake, and give him three chances, three chances to save his knight. Okay, the classic attack the queen. I go up there, attacking the knight, being aggressive. Okay, he comes in there with the knight, attacking the queen. Normally that would frighten most players off where they would just go ahead and move the queen out the way. And then the uh, opponent will go ahead and take the knight, exchange knights, um, or take the knight if the queen doesn't move into a position to protect the knight. Okay, but as you can see, I didn't give him a fourth chance to save that knight after he made that error in attacking my queen. Okay, and I'm also at the same time still protecting my knight. Okay, I checked him. So he doesn't take because exchange knights because he's in check. And he has to move the king. Okay, so I'm just being aggressive and just place the knight up there. 
attacking that pawn where the king is at right there okay classic opponent they you know they see you up there too close up in their territory so basically what he's trying to do is just get my knight to uh, go away because uh, my knight's a threat so of course I just go backwards you know stay in the uh, I stay in the fight with the knight okay he decides not to take the knight right away so he moves the king over I'm not sure why he does that but I guess basically probably I don't know maybe he wants to you know move all his other pieces over like his queen But to me, it seems like he's just backing himself up into a corner. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and free my other pieces. Get them into the fight. All right, so he moved. I don't know why he did that, but he played into my hands where he just moved his king right into the line of sight of the bishop and the queen and the knight which is crazy because you would think you would keep the king within you know keep the king safe or protect the king but it doesn't look like the player is trying to do that all right so now he reveals his true intentions to go ahead and just start trying to free up his uh, looks like he was just trying to come out there in a stupid way uh, free up his rook so his true attentions get revealed so he could bring his rook down there probably attack my queen but instead he attacked first with the pawn so in that situation was a really bad move but even if he came and took his rook, attacking my queen, you know, it'll still be the same situation um, because now I would have a rook, you know, in, in, in the mix or be able to take a rook. Once I exchange knights, attacking the rook, also at the same time, uh, forking, the king and the knight, I mean, and the rook with the knight. So he attacks. It's a beautiful setup because it looks like I'm just being attacked and and I'm in a very weak position, but I'm actually very aggressive and have a really strong position. Uh, as you can see, I'm controlling the center uh, more than he is, even though he does have some pieces there. Um, and he's trying to regain the center mass there or the center columns. So those center four squares. But it looks like that I'm dominating right now. It gives me a lot of power. So all I do is just something simple. He thinks I'm going to move my queen and get scared and nervous like most other opponents but basically I give him a surprise by okay yeah you attack my king my queen but I attack your king and guess what you have to move your king first <laughs> so in that situation right there um, the knight because the knight is a brilliant piece in this position um, to deal in this, to deal in this situation, um, whereas the bishop is long range with check, um, the opponent can't even push the pawn up next to the king to protect the king. And the knight is beautiful because not only is is checking it, that it took his knight while my queen is being attacked. You know, 
he can't even take with his queen or take with his pawn tonight to stop the checkmate or stop the attack on the king, which is beautiful because he's in check. He has to move the king. You know, he can't take another piece or can't take my queen. He can't take my knight. He has to move the king. He couldn't move the king because the knight was in the beautiful position where it could not be taken or exchanged by the opponent. And at the same time, it's also controlling that back rank square where the king cannot, that black square G8 and it's controlling the uh, and it's attacking the king on the uh, H2 square so and the bishop is just sitting back chilling relaxing doing the long range attack as well so he's being checked by two different pieces or attacked by two different pieces the knight and the bishop at the same time so taking the knight and there's no way he can attack the bishop because the bishop is long range and the knight is attacking those two major squares up there um, so it's just just an amazing just a brilliant game checkmate